Hi, this is Dr. Dave. As you well know, I take depression and its treatment very seriously. Depression is the most common psychiatric illness seen in the world. It is a leading cause of disability. It can kill you 10 to 12 years before your time, and yet um, our outcomes for treating this potentially horrible illness have not improved on average in, in over 60 years. A very common clinical scenario I encounter in my office is an individual who presents with depression on an antidepressant and yet they're not well. The data is very sobering. Up to two-thirds of people treated with an antidepressant for the depression have residual symptoms. This slide is a graph of results from a large National Institute of Mental Health sponsored study of depressed patients showing that two-thirds of people remain symptomatic following antidepressant treatment. That, If you have residual symptoms, you are much more likely to have a relapse and you're much more likely to have that relapse occur in a short period of time. All right, let's cut to the chase. So you're depressed, you're on an antidepressant, uh, what should you do? Do you increase the dose of the medication, inviting more side effects? Do you switch medications? Do you add a second medication? There are three um, pharmaceutical medications approved by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, to be added adjunctively to an existing antidepressant. We won't go into that today. Do you change clinicians? Possibly. Uh, but if you got one you know and like and trust and can afford, keep him or her. Uh, do you try natural approaches? And there is a lot of good data for adding something to that antidepressant, such as fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, um, methyl cobalamin, a specific form of vitamin D12. Today, though, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite augmentation strategies, and that is a specific form of bioactive folate that we call L-methylfolate. First thing I do is why are you not getting better and most often the case is you're inflamed. People with evidence of increased inflammation prior to treatment are less likely to respond to antidepressant treatment, lithium, other biological treatment for depression. Moreover, people who do not respond well to medications are much more likely to be inflamed. In other words, if you are inflamed, you are less likely to respond to your antidepressant medications. And if you haven't responded to your current antidepressant medication, you are likely to be showing evidence of systemic inflammation elsewhere. What are some of those other signs of systemic inflammation? Intolerance of others, of yourself, of food. That's that self-hatred, self-deprecating thinking. You just made cranky by everybody in your life and you don't handle food as well as you used to. That has to do with that gut brain connection we've talked about before. Uh, leaden paralysis, just getting your leg and foot up on the next step to climb that flight of stairs is more than your body can do. Anhedonia, a Greek term for inability to derive pleasure out of previously enjoyable activities. Fatigue, fatigue, fatigue. This is prominent uh, among people who have inflammation, particularly depression associated with inflammation, elevated BMI, body mass index, i.e. you're gaining weight and you can't get it off. You're not sleeping well. You have fragmented sleep at night, making you sleepy throughout the day. And then a lot of social isolation. Don't want to be around other people. Don't want to be around you. So what? Well, if you're inflamed, you're going to increase the rate at which you burn through your already dwindling supply of key neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and acetylcholine. And likewise, not only are you burning through those very key chemicals more quickly, you are slower and more sluggish at making them to replenish those dwindling supplies. Lastly, if you're inflamed, you are low in CNS, central nervous system, amounts of folate. Um, all that continues to make sure you have low serotonin, low dopamine, low norepinephrine, low acetylcholine, which keeps you depressed. What else might cause low folate in addition to inflammation? Well, usually it's things associated with inflammation, such as being overweight, being uh, old over the, the age of 70, certain medications such as lamictal, Tegretol, Depakote, Methotrexate, Prozac, Metformin, birth control pills, 
and excess smoking and drinking and of course genetics That's right two-thirds in excess of two-thirds of people suffering from depression have a genetic inborn impairment in the ability to generate L-methylfolate from dietary folate i.e. green leafy vegetables or from synthetic folic acid that you might find in your multivitamin if you have this it's going to be much more difficult for you to decrease inflammation and make neurotransmitters fast enough to keep up with your dwindling supply because of the very inflammation and that's why we don't even bother giving folic acid or tell you to eat dark green leafy vegetables at least not for that reason we just go ahead and give you L-methylfolate so if you're depressed not responding to that antidepressant you're overweight showing other evidence of being inflamed L-methylfolate is one of the first things I add uh, to your uh, treatment why again because it's the only form of folate that crosses the blood-brain barrier and thereby the only form of folate that your brain can use to make those key neurotransmitters when to consider start taking l-methylfolate if you have mild to moderate depressive symptoms for which for let's say you don't want to take medications at all you could make a case for for using all natural approaches uh, fish oil vitamin d l-methylfolate um, probably L or methylcobalamin or you may want to add it to a new antidepressant right at the time that you start that antidepressant certainly I would recommend taking it before raising uh, or maximizing the dose of your existing antidepressant before switching to another agent and, and probably before adding one of those bigger guns um, approved by the FDA there are many good forms out there by many companies uh, Deplin uh, is a brand that I know and trust uh, used to be made by Pam lab I think now Nestle makes it and and that is a medical food approved by the FDA to be added adjunctively to an existing antidepressant I also like our form uh, it's called methyl essentials we throw in uh, a little bit of extra b12 in addition to that on methylfolate Zymogen makes a good product there are many many more that I I, I cannot uh, comment on but we tend to use either the medical food prescription grade Deplin uh, or we use the non-prescription uh, just the same just about as strong the methyl essentials and then Zymogen has a good product so those are the three I stick with uh, of course if you're interested in learning more you can uh, check us out at integrative psychiatry info at integrative psychiatry dot net will also uh, get an email to me you can give us a call I'd love to hear from you let me know if this format works the nice thing about these um, little slide presentations is you don't have to look at my ugly face as opposed to those videos I know you've seen before so I'll talk to you soon thanks for tuning in